Hey, good morning, folks. Today we're going to take a look at a Pioneer TX930 tuner. Now, I picked this up on eBay for $10. It said it wasn't working, and it's not. And I'm going to zoom in here. We'll take a look at the symptoms, and I'll show you what I think it is. Full disclosure, I haven't even taken the top off of this yet. So we're going to take a look at what I'm seeing here, and we'll talk about what I believe it is. Okay, so I have the output of this connected to the oscilloscope. I'm going to just get it back here a little so you can see both. I'm going to turn it on. You can see there was no deflection on the scope. I'm going to turn it off and on again. And if you watch the scope, you'll see there's absolutely no change. Normally, when you power something up, you should see a slight deflection of the traces. We're seeing nothing. And I have it connected to an antenna, and I'm not getting anything anywhere. Get no signal at all. Now, I want to zoom in on this thing because I believe we have a problem with the switching. If we go between AM and FM, where's our band? By the way, I do have the muting off. If we go to AM, we still get no signal on our scope. But more importantly, I want you to take a look here. If we zoom in a little bit, there's two LEDs right here for AM and FM. And neither of these illuminate. I believe we're going to find our problem is in here. Now, tuners work by simply powering either the AM section or the FM section, depending on the mode you're in. So even though it, it rather looks like a power supply problem, I believe what we're going to find is a switching problem. So I'm going to put the schematics up here. We're going to take a look at that, and I'll show you what I believe is a the problem. Then we'll pop the cover off. Probably going to break this video up into two parts because we're going to do the troubleshooting and repair, and then in the second one, we're going to go through the alignment. And I want to go through with my uh, HP 8657A and tell you why I selected that particular generator over all the other ones on the market. Okay, this is one of those schematics that prints on a that was printed on a fold out and it was scanned in three different sections so what I've done is I have taped all three of them together so you can get an overview of the whole thing now what I did also was I printed out the areas of interest that we're going to take a look at because I'm going to show you where I think the problem is then we're going to pop the cover off and see if I'm right all right so what we want to look at is where the switching is actually occurring so here are our LEDs right here. Here's FM and AM. And they are switched by these two transistors here and here. Q23 and 24. That's our FM AM selector. Okay, and as you can see, the signal is going to come into this transistor here. And we're either going to turn on our FM or we're going to turn on our AM. What that does is it brings 13 volts over to B4 and B3. So this is FM and this is AM. Okay, so they go over and if we look here, we have our AM coming in at B4 and this is our AM B plus and that's going to go straight into our chip and it's also going to go into the AM front end okay conversely if we were in FM our FM B plus is coming in here at B3 it's our 13 volts and it's going to go up and that is going to go into our FM front end okay so now we're going to pop the cover off and see if I'm right. Okay, so I printed out the board layout and we're going to take a look at Q23 and 24. And they are buried down in here below this connector. 
Now, they didn't make it easy for, easy for us to get to, but if we move this cable, we should be able to see where we need to go. Our transistors are buried here and here. Okay, so we got to take a look at these two. Now, I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to put the meter here so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, there's a little glare, but hopefully you can see that. Now, we're just going to ground it right to the chassis. Okay, and then we're going to look at our transistors to see what kind of voltage we get. Now, what we're going to want to look at, just to recap, is we're going to take a look at the base of Q24 and see if it changes between AM and FM. Okay, so... Let's see. Yeah, right. 24 is the one all the way on the bottom. Okay, so our base is going to be over on the right. I have to move the meter just a little bit. Let me try and keep it in view and make sure there's no glare. And the unit is on. And we have virtually nothing at the base. Now I'm going to switch bands. It's currently on FM. Now it's AM. And we have 4.2 volts. Okay, so our switching is working. But let's see what the collector looks like there. The emitter has nothing. We have 4.2 volts on the base. These are PMP transistors, so they're not going to switch like that. Let's take a look at the base of Q23. We have nothing on the base there, which is to be understood. We have nothing on the collector. The collector should be at 13 volts. We look at our schematic here. You can see, the, I'm sorry, it's the emitters we need to look at. Let's take a look at that again. My mistake, I apologize. It's very early. But yeah, I have nothing at the emitters. So we're going to want to look at our 13 volt source here. We have nothing. Okay. So let's find out where that is and take a look at it. Okay, if we look at our 13 volt supply, we can see that comes right from Q21. We should have 14.9 volts at the emitter. It doesn't say what we should have at the collector, but it should be more than that. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Q21 should be this guy right down here. So let's see what we get here. I got 5 volts, so no, that's not the right one. This is the one here. I think I pointed at the right one and then put the probe on the wrong one. Okay, I got 15.6 volts here. Now, if we look at our schematic, that feeds through a small inductor. Let me move that to make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Our emitter should be 14.9 volts through this inductor and it should feed into Q23's emitter and Q24's emitter, and we had nothing there. All right, so we need to see where L2 is and see if maybe L2 has gotten open. Okay, so this is gonna necessitate quite a bit of disassembly to get to what we need to get to. There are three tabs I depressed with the screwdriver here here and one to the left of it so I could pop the front panel off. There's a screw here and a screw here. The whole front's going to have to come off. So we got this piece off so that we can now get to the screw here, in here, and over here so we can pull the front off and see what we've got going on. I believe that inductor may be open but there may also be a broken trace on the board. In any event we need to get continuity between our regulator output and the emitters of the switching transistors. Now the 
voltage we measured was about 15.6 volts. The schematic says 14.9. An unloaded regulator will usually be a little bit high. All right, so let me get the rest of this apart and we'll see what we have. Okay, so this is our regulator transistor here and this is the inductor we want to take a look at. That's L2. Okay, so if we look here, we have our series pass transistor, the emitter which is supposed to put out 14.9 volts, 14 volts through L2, a 6.8 millihenry inductor right here. Now, if we look here, we can see that our regulator is here and L2 is back here. On the circuit board, it's really hard to see. Let me get some light in here. And if you look right here, this is L2. Now I'm gonna flip this up so we can get to the bottom and check it for continuity. All right, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get the meter in this. But if you can see right down in here, this is the base collector and emitter of our pass transistor right here and down in here, right about here, and I know there's a lot of glare, this is our inductor here and here. So I have my meter in continuity mode. So we should get continuity through our inductor. Now if we go from here to here, we get continuity. We go here, we don't. So I believe our inductor is open. I'm going to unsolder that. We're going to test it out of circuit. And if it's open, I'm going to have to try and find a spare. Okay, so I've unsoldered the inductor. We're going to see if I can get it out of here. Okay. Okay, so this is our inductor. Okay. And we're going to take a look at it. I'm just going to put the meter in ohms. And we're going to take a look at this inductor. As you can see, this inductor is wide open. Okay. So, what I'm going to do just for testing purposes is I'm going to jump around where the inductor goes. Now, in an application like this, the inductor is simply there for added filtering. So by jumping it out, we just want to have proof of concept that that is our problem. And then meantime, I've got to go through my junk box and see if I can find a spare. Okay, so I've got it kind of snapped back together. I've soldered a piece of wire that I formed into a coil just to add some inductance, even though for our purposes it doesn't matter. And I connected it to a dim bulb tester because this unit appears to have no fuses in it whatsoever. I find that a little dodgy, but you know, here we are. And I wanted to make sure if there were any problems that it would be on the dim bulb and we wouldn't see any smoke. Now, I didn't mention this before, but while I had it apart, I thought it would be a good idea to test those two transistors to make sure there were no shorts. Because you have to wonder why that inductor opened up. I have seen them open. Uh, but generally speaking, something won't open up unless too much current is going through it, and inductors should be able to handle quite a bit of current. On the other hand, they sometimes just fail. In any event, let's turn this on while we watch the scope and see what we see. Now you see that little motion we got when we turned it on, and now we have static. I don't know if I'll pick up anything because I don't have any antenna on this. Yeah, it's not picking up anything. So let's see here if I can get an antenna and pick up something. We, there may still be a problem, but at least now we know the front end is working. Because if it wasn't, we wouldn't see any motion at all on the scope. Okay. Incidentally, there's a battery in this unit for holding the presets. Okay, having an antenna on here, we have a radio station. Okay, it's just continuously scanning. Let's see if I can figure out how to turn that off. And the tuner doesn't wrap. 
Okay, so we have something here. Tell you what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up so you can hear what we have. Okay. Okay, so we'll take that out of the scope and we'll connect it to my test stereo on the bench. Through May 1st is Sean Kenny's Nature Pop. All these really cool exhibits made with Legos. Okay, so everything appears to be working. I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to post this video up there. Meantime, I'm going to have to look through my junk box and see if I can find a 6.8 ohm, 6.8 Milla Henry inductor and we'll pop that in and then the next thing we're do, going to do is go through the alignment but I want to point out how we got to where our problem was as quickly as we did because what you have to think about is the symptoms we saw on the front panel we had no LED indication of AM or FM band selected and that pointed me to the switching transistors which had no supply voltage, which took us back to the power supply. It helps to have an idea where to look. And I've recently started telling people when I'm discussing troubleshooting to let the symptom be your guide. That symptom zeroed us in on the area very close to the power supply where we found our problem. All right, so I'm going to sign off here. And next time we take a look at this thing, we're going to go through the alignment. All right, folks. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. And as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot and have a great day.